Cards Action News, hosted by Marjorie and Arnie. Helping Star Wars collectors collect better. Hello and welcome to Star Wars Action News. This is Marjorie. And this is Arnie. And welcome back to another live episode. We're having a lot of fun doing these. Yeah, these are super fun because it's a whole different level of preparation. Plus, we get some interact- interaction with you guys. And we've got people monitoring the different feeds to kind of feed us questions and fun comments. So if you've got something to say, let us know. I really like this format. Yeah, we are right now live on YouTube, on Periscope, on Facebook, and on our homepage. So I thought Periscope was gone. No, nah, it's still the Twitter live stream It's thing. called, yeah. I miss Vine. So we are going to be talking quite a bit about the barge coming up later on. We're going to be joined by Andrew. We're going to be talking some of the toys at Toy Fair we haven't talked about on the show yet. But first... Star Wars Celebration, 30 days, a little bit less than 21 hours now. Yeah, I think you took that a while ago, but it's coming up. We are going to be there. We're doing the collector social area again, so you can come find us there and hang out with us. We're going to have a lot of fun activities going on there from collecting podcasts to collecting clubs and who knows what else. We're still in the midst of getting some stuff together, but it'll be a great time. Swag. It's all about the swag. It's all about swag. I will have swag. You'll have swag. We're all going to have swag. And remember, there's no rules for swag. But not only will we be in the collector's social area a lot, but we are going to be live on the podcast stage on Sunday, April 14th. Yep, at 11 a.m. So you can come join us. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do yet. We're going to have some fun, probably talk about some of the stuff at the show, some of the collectibles and who knows what's going to happen. Last time, we had a Jar Jar flash mob, which was awesome. If you have your Jar Jar mask from last time, definitely bring it. That would be super cool. And we'll be doing some podcasts from the social area as well. But this is going to be our big show. We're hopefully going to have some special guests, some Star Wars action news team members from across the pond. And on this side of the pond and all over this side of the country. And... You mentioned Jar Jar Mask, but oh I know... Oh god, I'm so excited, I can't stand it! I think this is the first time since Celebration 1, your favorite Jar Jar actor, you're the only Jar Jar yeah, actor... Yeah, the only Jar Jar actor. Ahmed Best is coming to Celebration! This is a dream come true, guys! You have no idea how excited I am. Autograph, photo op, I don't even know what I'm going to get autographed. I mean, this is so freaking exciting, I'm like... I have such a level of anxiety and panic over, oh my god, what pose am I going to do with him? What am I going to have him sign? Do I need to get more than one signature? What am I going to do? Do you guys have this normally? Is this just me? It's mostly you, because oh. I I mean, I have this down. What am I going to have him sign? My episode one visual dictionary. What am I going to do in a photo op? I'm not going to get a photo op. I don't really like photo op. Okay, but what do you do when you get your photo op? Because you got your picture taken with the girl that came down from corporate, um, Felicity Jones. Yeah, so I looked like I was employee of the month in that one. Yeah, I think. She, she looks like she came down to the factory floor to award the employee of the month because she was all dressed up very nice in a very prim and proper suit and stood an appropriate two to three feet away from everybody. And... I know that in some of the other photo ops I've done, I just look grumpy. So, really, photo ops are not my thing. I have the photo op to end all photo ops, so I don't know what I'm going to do. It it was a non-Star Wars person. If you follow me on Facebook, you've seen my epic gun show I got with Chris Evans. But I don't know what to do with Ahmed Best. Oh, my God. Sadly, this isn't going to be like one of Jeremy Bullock's last appearances where he did it in full costume. Because I would love for him to be in the Jar Jar outfit. With the mocap? The, the, like, he had a visor over his eyes and the head above his head and all of that. That would be pretty awesome. That would be incredibly awesome. But I'm hoping he's just dressed as he is in the photo in everyday clothes. And I'll figure out something cool. I'm so I'm so glad he's coming because you know he and Jake Lloyd and they suffered a lot of online abuse and harassment in the early days even before Twitter and things and I know Jake Lloyd 
hasn't done a lot of conventions lately, but this is Ahmed Best's first time, and he's been talking... The second time. It's the first time since Celebration 1, right? Right, right. I, I think, don't know if he did any more before Celebration 1, but his first time since the Jar Jar backlash. Well, and I don't understand that, because I've always loved Jar Jar, and I, I like Episode 1 a lot. I like the prequels a lot. And... Jar Jar, I don't care what you say, Jar Jar is the most pure character in the entire Star Wars saga because everything he does is for his friends. He has the biggest heart. Yeah, he also has the biggest feet, which steps in the biggest piles of doo doo. I have giant feet. Do you step in a lot of poo doo? It happens. <laughs> well, I know you are excited about that guest. And also, we're collecting show and the collectibles have started for celebration and because even before Ahmed Best was announced you were on me that I had to be ready on February 22nd to get you a Jar Jar Binks pin never mind that I had to buy a set of four pins and it was forty dollars but you needed that Jar Jar Binks. I did. And if anybody doesn't want their Jar Jar Binks I will gladly trade you something for the Jar Jar Binks. I'm sure I have something with me at Celebration, last Celebration with the trading pins with Jar Jar Binks, I had numerous lanyards full of Jar Jar because no one wanted Jar Jar. So I, I will do that again. I know you had to pay for these like the other ones, but I've got stuff to trade, guys. Hit me up. I'm going to be bringing a bunch of stuff. And, you know, I, I have to say, Arnie, I, I love this one. It's an Episode 1 set again. I love Episode 1. But the Watto is always going to be special to me. I love Watto before that, but... He always makes me think of your dad because your father had the same accent. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about the time we hung out with Andy Sacombe at dinner. Well, no, that's a different memory. But <laughs> oh, now you've soiled that. <laughs> ask me in pri Ask me not on the air about dinner with Watto sometime because it's um. <laughs> it was fun. Oh my gosh, it's not it's not PG. Remember um, how we made John Howard's keep Andy Sacombe's leftovers and told him that that was going to be an eBay fortune. Yes. <laughs> Oh, that was fun. But these pins were not fun because I spent hours on Friday trying to get these pins. The site crashed. The link was secret. You could only get the link if you bought a pass to the convention because this is attendee-only pins. So they didn't tweet it or Facebook it, but they emailed it out. And they were going on Friday at noon, my time, and the site just crashed and refresh, refresh, refresh. Fast forward hours later, Ed Reed Pop's like, yeah, we're going to scrub it for today and try again on Monday. Well, one time, because you kept hitting refresh, you ended up, like, their system, like, really went bonkers. And you had $900 worth of pins in your cart. Well, that was on Monday. Oh, okay. It was Monday when they tried again. And I still had to spend several hours trying to get these pins and you know you me daryl and so many others mark fenrick so many people were on a chat group on our iphones and just complaining and i'm sending photos it's like okay i've added them to cart it tells me i owe nine hundred dollars <laughs> i've added 22 <laughs> sets to cart i don't want 22 sets i want two sets Finally, we got that and the t-shirt, but these pins are not going to be in the show store. It's part of the big pin trading program. I don't even know what's on the shirt. At this point, I really don't care. I just wanted the Jar Jar pin. And then a few weeks later, the second set of pins, Anakin and Padme went up and because you didn't want them. And I honestly, $10 a pin is a lot per a pin in my mind. I know maybe I'm just... I've been collecting so long that I'm back where three and three quarter action figures were $5, but $40 for some pins seemed like a lot, so I'm not interested in the Anakin Padme set, but apparently not a lot of other people were either, as the people I know who bought it sailed right through that checkout. Wasn't it kind of like a, like it went up and then secretly, like they didn't announce the time? It was kind of under the radar? No, they announced it oh, a couple okay. days in advance, but pin set three is coming soon, and... Judging by the art, I think it's, it's going to be Harley Quinn. I think it's going to be some rebels. Yeah, it looks like rebels or or Harley Quinn. Maybe they're just going to go out the other way with it. No, I think it's Kane and Jarrus, and and then also speaking of pre-orders for Celebration, if you are going and want some of the art at the art show, that 
those pre-orders opened a while ago. We did a big article at SWActionNews.com rounding up every artist because it got really confusing this year. There were a lot of them being sold directly through Acme and Acme's store site, Dark Inc., but there were still a number of artists in the official art show, like this piece here that we pre-ordered from Brian Miller. And I love this piece. Yeah, it is really nice, but it was not ordered through Dark Inc. It was ordered through his website, Octopolis, O-K-T-O-P-O-L-I-S. But whether it's through Dark Inc. or the artist's own site, these orders are only up until the 15th at noon Pacific, and then you have to take your chances at the show. Now, I may get some more art at the show. There's a lot of nice pieces, but we pre-ordered two. I fell in love with the one you're looking at right now, Brian Miller's. That It, it hits me right in the feels. First of all, it's the six movies. It's travel, which we do a lot of traveling. It's vintage and kind of cool. So this is really awesome, and I can't wait to find a place to hang it in the house. The thing that Brian Miller suggested on his social media is getting a bunch of autographs on it, too. That wouldn't be a bad idea is to get people from each planet to try to autograph That's... each area. Damn it, Brian! Damn it! <laughs> Why did you have to mention that? Because now I'm like, well, maybe I need a second one to do that. I just love that the ticket to the Death Star was ripped in half and canceled. Yeah. And then the other piece of art we pre-ordered was the Boonta Eve Classic. And this is something that maybe I want Greg Proops to sign for me. No, we're not getting autographs on this stuff. No? No. But I love this because it's very... I just love the style of it. It's very retro. I love the pod race. I think that's an awesome scene in the movie. And Sabalba, he's awesome. I, I always, in there. I always like Dud Bolt. I don't know why, but Dud Bolt always just, he always has this look of just pure ignorance. And I love it. Yeah, no, this is a great <laughs> piece of art. It's, I feel like Eddie Murphy in The Golden Child. The greatest wisdom is wisdom from ignorance. <laughs> I just thought this was a really fun piece. It's in a style we haven't seen very often, and G you don't get much episode one love. Gungans no longer allowed in pit areas. Mm. But there's a lot of great art I still have my eye on. I didn't necessarily pre-order, but Spencer Brinkhoff III has a nice 3D shadow box piece. I always love Chris Trevis's art, and he's got a classic like Empire Strikes Back, Han and Lando with an Ugnaught doing some work in the background. Just some great art there, so get your orders in. And while we're talking about collecting at Celebration, the collecting track is the craziest place to be while you're a collector because every collector is going to go there, and a lot of collectors have that mindset instilled in us by Kenner, collect them all. It was not a request, it was an imperative. And what is harder to collect than a full set of Star Tots? And Gus and the collecting track are bringing a new set of Star Tots again this year. The first four have been revealed. Yep, you've got Luke Skywalker, Biggs Darklighter, R2-D2. With sensor scope? Yes. And a Rebel Trooper. And I believe, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Biggs is the first time we're getting a Star Tot that is not directly based on an action figure because this is cutscene Biggs. Now, I know that there was a figure of that eventually made in the modern era, but on the vintage, which is where a lot of the collecting track people focus, this one seems a little bit outside the norm. Also outside the norm this time, are you looking above the Star Tots heads? Yeah, there's coins this year, so that's really cool and exciting because, I don't know, who doesn't love coins? It's going with the power of the Force 1 that they were doing, the vintage kind of look, but it's power of the flat because Star Tots are flat. So these are the first four of 20 that will be revealed. So keep an eye on our website as soon as they get added. We can't mention anything until Celebration's website announces it. So when they're up there, we'll also have them up on our site. But it's 
going to be fun. And for those who are new and may or maybe just don't know this, you don't have to attend every collecting panel to get all the star tots. No, because it would be almost impossible because you'd have to have somebody waiting in line to hold your place in line so you can exit the room and then get back into the line to get back in because the room is cleared between panels. So after the show is done, on the very last day, any extra star tots are given away. So there's a big line that forms... And then everybody goes through, they give out tickets and usually say, hey, this is as many people as we can do. And you can go and you can pick one. And then you can get back in line and keep going until you get everything or they run out. And you're not going to get a full set this way. No. Because there's a lot of people who go to this line. And this is how they've done it in previous years. This year, it has not been decided exactly how or when they're giving it out. But it's almost always on the last day which is Monday. I know a lot of people are leaving early on Monday mm-hmm. and won't be there for it or have flights out Monday night. But if you're around, you can go and if you have a friend who's sticking around and there's a specific star tot or two you need, maybe they can cycle through the lines once or twice and get them for you. And of course, if you get two of one by going to a panel with a friend, you can always try trading as well. Yep, there will be some trading times set up um, that are officially the star tot trading times or just hang out in the social area because there's a lot of trades going on. The patch guys will come and like take a table and do all their trading. It, it's like a crazy bazaar. Everything is trading all the time. Buttons are currency. It's super fun. So make sure to come hang out with us though. Definitely. And do some trading. But let's talk toy fair before we get into this week's biggest topic because We talked a lot about the Hasbro stuff, and if anybody has questions about Hasbro's Toy Fair stuff still, go ahead, ask them in the chat, we'll answer them later on in the show, but I thought we should take a look at a few other licensees that we just haven't podcasted about yet in regards to Toy Fair, the first of which, the biggest news right before Toy Fair, and the biggest questions I had going into Toy Fair is, well... What happens to Gentle Giant now? (laughs) Yeah, that was kind of a bomb to find out that Diamond was going to take over Gentle Giant. This wasn't exactly a surprise. I mean, it wasn't a surprise that Gentle Giant was kind of getting out of the business. Everything was half off for like the fourth quarter of last year. I got so many statues and busts and all this stuff half off from them, half off from Big Bad Toy Store. Stuff that was on pre-order was half off. I was like, okay, this is not the sign of a healthy business model. (laughs) But I know also, Gentle Giant was a subsidiary of 3D Systems. And 3D Systems, Gentle Giant, make a ton of money because they do all the 3D scanning for films. I mean, one of the great things about Gentle Giant as the license is You had them working on the films, scanning the actors for their digital likenesses, and then you had them using those digital files in order to sculpt the busts and things. So, obviously, 3D Systems seemed to be doing very well. I don't know anything about their financials, but I see them credited in a lot of movies. However, it seems that they stopped doing the action figures. Remember that was all the rage for like three years where you could go get scanned in the booth, you pull your hair back in a headband, and they did it at Celebration one year, and I'm a very mannish Han Solo, it Mm -hmm. turns out. And that was 3D Plus Me, which was also a spinoff of 3D Systems. It's... They kept trying to get into consumer marketing, which is a very strange business for an effects company to get into. But, hey, I mean, for a while it worked for them. I mean, it's odd how this podcast has charted the meteoric rise... (laughs) And cataclysmic fall of Gentle Giant. I mean, well, not only Gentle Giant. I mean, look how much the landscape has changed. I mean, Master Replicas. When we started, Master Replicas was just starting their ascent. Uh huh. And then they no longer had the license. Yeah, I, we've seen a lot of changes. I mean, look at how much Sideshow's changed. Yeah, but Sideshow is still around, and they are, but very different. They distribute more. 
than they think they actually make anymore. In regards to Star Wars, that almost feels certainly true. Yeah. But what I didn't see coming was that Gentle Giant was going to be bought by Diamond. Although I guess I could have seen this for some parts because Gentle Giant, in addition to selling their own collectibles, does a lot of sculpting for Hasbro, for Gentle Giant, the artists... Or I'm sorry, for Diamond, for Hasbro, the artists at Gentle Giant are amazing sculptors and other collectibles companies use them for sculpting. And so there was a relationship between Diamond and Gentle Giant. Now, Diamond, if you guys go way back in the Star Wars Action News archives, we used to talk to Zach a lot for Star Wars Action News because they had a Star Wars license. It was a unique Star Wars license, they mostly did bust banks and bottle openers. <laughs> yes, it was the ch- fun tchotchke stuff. And the bust banks, though, had exclusives. They had exclusive clones. I remember at C2E2 one year, one of my favorite bust banks, the Jawa set that they had that was there. You could get an exclusive Jawa to complement the regular Jawa. And then around the time of the Disney buyout, Diamond stopped promoting their Star Wars items and quietly sold off all the rest of the Landspeeder bottle openers eventually and hasn't had the Star Wars license. So if you just collect Star Wars, you might not even know what Diamond's been up to lately, but they've really gotten into the statue market. Yeah, their gallery statues that they do for Marvel, great price point and a great product. So it, it's, I'd almost equate it to, and I hate to say it, but it's kind of like when you look at a Kodo their artifact statues. Kind of the similar thing, a little bit cheaper. You can and they're readily available at GameStop too, which is kinda nice. They're three different styles of statue. And they don't just do it for Marvel, they do it for DC, they do it for John Wick, they do it for Pacific Rim. They seem to have a lot of licenses and they do apply a lot of the same labels to them. I mean they have the select figures that they do with Muppets or Marvel and things which obviously they never did with Star Wars because Hasbro has a lock on the market for figures like that. But they have the gallery statues that are $50 PVC statues. They have the uh, premier statues that are about $150 resin statues. And then they have the showcase, which are like $300 masterworks is what they call them statues. So, If you look at what General Giant's business was and what Sideshow's business is, it just felt like there were a lot of people making a lot of mini busts and a lot of statues, and General Giant was one of them. So what's going to happen with the General Giant stuff that was solicited? Well, we went to Diamond, we talked to Zach, all they had on display was stuff previously solicited by General Giant. Now, I, again, am not involved in contract negotiations with licensees, so I made a mistake in assumption. I thought if you bought a company, you'd buy its license agreements. And so Diamond would be in the Star Wars statue business now. But per Zach, there's negotiations that need to go on. They need to talk with Lucasfilm and Disney and see how that license goes based upon the sheer volume of Marvel product they put out, odds are they have a pretty good relationship with Disney licensing. And again, I mentioned Muppets. That's a Disney license also. And they do some other Disney stuff. But will they be able to incorporate the Star Wars stuff in their statue lines? Conversations yet to happen. This was a buyout that had just been announced right before Toy Fair. The dust was still settling, but some of the things on display are stuff we saw at... San Diego. Yeah, including the Han and Carbonite Collector's Gallery statue. Something I know Marjorie was really interested in were the Porg bookends. Yeah, look at the detail on the little Porgs, though. I love the one standing on the lightsaber. Yeah. That Chewbacca, I freaking love that Chewbacca. I'm not a big Chewbacca fan. I mean, he's all right. I mean, he's not my focus or anything, but damn, that's a good statue. The hair is really good on it. I don't know how I feel about the very delineated 
coloring at the knees that makes it look almost like he's wearing shorts yeah and actually uh, it looks like he's wearing a bodysuit over a pair of shorts <laughs> i see what you're, you're meaning like like he's wearing the bodysuit outside his pants it's almost like he's wearing a superhero onesie and underneath that has a gray outfit on yeah yeah he's modest he didn't want to like let all the wookiness out but yeah i guess they could have done a little better like that but I love the face on it. I think they did a really good job. And I'm sorry, I love Chewbacca and goggles, and I don't care what anyone says. The only thing I don't like about this are his feet and his hands really creep me out. <laughs> and, you know, the goggles, it makes it specifically from Solo. It's from him on Vandor. And I know Solo is a bit of a divisive film. I liked it. But I don't know that if I was going to spend, you know, couple hundred dollars on a Chewbacca statue, am I going to pick the one from Solo? But this one has amazing sculpting, and I just hope they kind of smooth out that paint a little bit. I just like him in goggles. It's super cute. It's like the best thing ever. They had the Episode Eight Luke Skywalker mini bust and the Darth Vader statue still on display. This stuff is still being made and going to come out. The Praetorian Guard statue... Dengar sitting around looking like he's on a break. Yeah. He's Union. <laughs> Smoke break Dengar. <laughs> the Padme and the BB-8 statue, which are to scale with each other. That, that's Ray. Ray? What did I say? Padme. Oh, yes, it's Ray. Oh, my God. Is that foreshadowing? <laughs> is, is she Padme's daughter? Maybe? Granddaughter. Granddaughter? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that doesn't even look like Padme, Arnie. No, no, it does not. And... A lot of the stuff Gentle Giant had shown before was not out. Like, remember last year at San Diego, they had those pins, like the Dianoga pin. Yeah, there was a partnership with Left Coast Graphics where they were going to distribute the pins, and they had blind package pins, and they had non-blind package pins, which I still have never seen in stores, but you can buy them at Left Coast Graphics still now. So I don't know if that's not happening now i haven't seen anything talk about it but that was like all the rage last year at toy fair yeah well, well not was, all the rage no it was all they were talking about yeah. last year at toy fair again last year 2018 seeing gentle giant at toy fair a seeing gentle giant at toy fair was a new thing they'd never gone to the show proper in our years of covering they had a showroom off-site for a while and then they stopped doing that because they decided they didn't need to spend the money and that was 10 blocks to the south that wasn't anywhere near like the hasbro showroom is kind of near but the gentle giant one was with some other places it was off in the Flatiron district district and kind of but to see them on the show floor in the new company section hawking a bunch of stuff like these tiny tin pocket pals that they said we'd be able to find in Walgreens toy aisles. That is the sign of a drastically different business model than they'd ever done. And, uh, I mean, just quite honestly, a cheaper product, cheaper in cost, cheaper in expense. And it looks like the tiny tin series one, though it was still being displayed. So diamond was trying to get people to buy it at toy fair so then places like Walgreens will try to get you to buy it. I also want to just give an award. We don't talk about this company hardly at all on Star Wars Action News. <laughs> but NECA gets the award for most needless Star Wars tie-in. Now, this is the company that brought us the Vader Clapper. <laughs> but now, cha ch ch chia Yeah, so they've got a Chia Yoda. I know Chris is our resident Yoda collector and i wonder if he's gonna buy this um i can recommend guys i got lured into getting a spider-man chia pet like three or four years ago i gave it to you as a christmas gift it just came up on like memories did you give it to me for christmas or I no, gave it because i wouldn't buy it for myself because right. it's ridiculous yes not as ridiculous as this because that actually was growing a full plant whereas this it wasn't growing a plant well it was on a wall so it was yeah. spider-man on a wall and it looked like it was covered in ivy. Now, here's the problem with the chias. So, you got to get a lot of water going because you got to get your chia terracotta there. It's got to be soaked and you got to keep it soaked. So, then you're putting chia seeds, just like the chia seeds you eat and put in your yogurt, you're putting on Yoda's head. But you got to keep it moist. So, what happens, Arnie, 
when you're keeping something moist around the clock. And it's an organic matter. It gets moldy. A lot of mold. So I wrote to Chia, and they're like, well, that does happen a lot of times, so we suggest that you wash it off, soak in bleach for three days, rinse it really well, and try again. I'm like, nope, I'm done. It's going in the trash. So, good luck. If you get the Yoda, perhaps you can get Daniel-san next to him, because that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it, it was just a really weird kind of tie-in what i found weirdest about it it's not even that i was against a star wars chia pet god knows if there's a product they're gonna put star wars on it it's that yoda's bald it's that you're growing a bald man's hair it's that it's so little chia pet and so much brown yoda can you paint a Chia Pet? I mean, could somebody take this, like one of those cheap model kits you find in the Walgreens toy aisle and paint Yoda to look like Yoda? But then I think you'd almost have to do an inverse, right? You'd have to paint Yoda white because he'll have green hair instead of painting him green with white hair. I think this is just a bad idea. Well, let's move on to some good ideas. 720, this is a company that you, we've talked about quite a bit on the show. Sometimes we refer to them as Underground Toys, which is one of their licenses. I thought that was a long time ago, though. And Comic Images. Okay, they have that now. And 720. And I knew this company, normally they don't do a lot of press at Toy Fair, but this year they were far more inviting. But I knew the company's name because... I've taken pictures of a lot of items for our photo galleries and put it under the company 720. Yeah, they are definitely the leader in quirky items, housewares, fun stuff. They had a whole R2-D2 line out, which I love the oven mitts. Those are super cool. See, they're getting me right in the stuff that like I'll use because I would totally put those in my house. They do make the popcorn poppers. They've got similar stuff as Darth Vader. What got me is over here, what this is, is a grill tool briefcase. So inside the Han and Carbonite are going to be tongs and spatula and things you need when, you know, you're a man and you're grilling, you know, get the charcoal going and whatnot. But what they told us is this is just what they were showing. It is actually going to be a 3D Han and Carbonite sculpture on the front of that case. So... Now, I definitely need that for when I'm out there grilling. Mm -hmm. They've also got a whole bunch of fun coffee cups and travel mugs. You can see that I like a Japanese-inspired one. Some what, what they told us, which I found really interesting, is they're one of the few companies allowed to go off-road with the style guide. Yeah, they don't have to use the style guide like everyone else does, where like when you look at Tervis or... Jax or something, if Jax was still doing Star Wars stuff, where it's all cookie cutter and you get tired of the same clip art, they can, their art department at 720 is allowed to just interpret stuff and make really cool stuff. Yeah, it, got, it has to be approved by Lucasfilm, yeah. but you're going to see designs from 720 that you've never seen anywhere else. And we know that the majority of our listeners are adult collectors. We are adult collectors. Yes, there's definitely a kid contingent to our listenership, but this kind of stuff is what catches my eye. If I saw the Japanese hand-drawn R2 Yoda Ewok mug in a store, I would have to have that. And something else that we discussed with the people at 720 was, when you're an adult, sometimes you just don't want to have bright red and bright blue plastic plates. Yeah, I mean, you want, like, nice plates for dinner, and... They have a Princess Leia set of plates that I think are really nice looking. And you, know, you could probably serve your relatives food on this and they would never even know it was Star Wars. I mean, I guess if they looked at the middle, but... It's wonderfully subtly Star Wars. Yeah. It looks like nice plates because of the pattern around it. But yet, yeah, right in the middle, you've got Leia giving the plans to R2 or... Just a nice design of Leia's head with the rebel symbol. This kind of stuff really speaks to me. And I could see us replacing our current, you know, they're kind of cool looking plates that we have, but they're not Star Wars cool. They are, yeah. I mean, really cool. They also redid the ginormous Porg, um, fixed his lips, made him a little bit more accurate. So that is coming. They didn't make the first Porg, did they? Yeah. The, the big one that was given uh -huh. out at Target? Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. they were making that is there. So this yeah. is you missed that whole conversation I had with that guy then, huh? Yeah, I was taking a lot of photos. You were having yeah. the conversation. So yes. this is version 2.0. Yes. Is this one electronic? Yes. Oh. Well, we're going to have one of the Star Wars Action News team joining us now. Andrew, who's our Hot Toys addict, Lego collector, and all-around good guy, is going to join us to talk a little bit about a couple of collectibles. Hi. So, Andrew, we've brought you on to talk about a number of things, but to start off with, you collect a lot more Star Wars Legos than I do. <laughs> a lot more Star Wars Lego sets than I do. Uh-huh, right. Yeah, I, uh, I got all of them, but uh, two of the older older sets i don't have the original uh ultimate collector series tie interceptor or the darth maul busts that's uh those two are the ones that I, i'm still uh, waiting to find a, a decent deal on but everything else yeah i've got it uh somewhere in my collection i didn't realize you were a completist on the lego sets yeah 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 i uh way back in the day back well 20 years ago now uh uh in 97 i was in college and i had seen either online or through star wars insider that they were coming out with star wars lego sets and so i started calling our local toys r us there in decatur asking them if they had these star wars lego sets in stock it was like every other week i would call them and they got to know who i was and uh, <laughs> i think they started getting a little annoyed because they you know there was no release date announced they just said it was going to be coming you know later in the year and so i just uh kept calling and kept keeping my fingers crossed eventually i finally uh, did pick them up and yeah the rest is history and they started 20 years ago you said 97 but they're celebrating the 20th anniversary this year right so didn't they did they start with episode one? Oh, right yeah sorry yeah it would have been yeah it would have been 99 you're right yep i gotta work on my math skills it was, yeah, it was definitely 99, because I would have been, yeah, I was a sophomore in college at the point. So, yeah, 99, definitely. And I was in the working world, although not gainfully employed, I was employed, and I remember seeing the first Lego sets come out and being like, wow, that's expensive, <laughs> <laughs> sticking to Hasbro stuff. But I did eventually dabble in Lego, and I get a, definitely a few sets every year, plus the advent calendar. But I thought, since you do buy quite a few of these, I, we'd get your input instead of just our own about some of the stuff they showed at Toy Fair. Yeah, they uh, they showed new stuff, which I was kind of surprised at. A lot of times at, at Toy Fair, they show stuff that's already been uh, it's already been announced. They've already shown the items online, and some places are already starting to sell some of them. And you get a little bit of you got a little bit of that here. Uh, this year, but uh, we got some new stuff, and some of it was kind of surprising to me. Um, like those uh, battle sets, um, I found those to be kind of interesting, and I've got some questions for you guys, since you saw them up close and personal. Okay, shoot. Uh, so these are sets that have some sort of action feature, right? Like you shoot a giant projectile towards something and it like break apart or explodes or something. Is that the idea behind them? I believe you definitely do the shooting and the targeting. I, they did not demonstrate this. So I don't know if it breaks apart upon impact. That would make sense. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So these, I, I, I've got mixed feelings on them. They, they remind me of, uh, do you remember when Hasbro had the, those, what were they called? A tactics? A tactics. Remember those? Yes. That's what this well, reminds me of. Of course I do. Yeah. I still have boxes and boxes of them in the basement. Oh, boxes. yeah. I've, I do, too. I do, too. It was, they were, they were interesting. They were fun for a little while. Uh, <laughs> but this is, this reminds me a lot of that where you've got your traditional Lego set that you put together, but then you've got this giant monstrosity of a cannon that you shoot at a really gaudy target and, you know, either it explodes or come apart or, or something. And, and, uh, it kind of takes away from the display value of these sets because of that giant target. Um, that, that's what I like to do with my sets. I don't really play with them all that much. My kids 
play with them a lot. But uh, for me, I prefer to just have them look nice on a shelf. And these aren't really going to look all that nice. I, are, do you know if it's something where that target could be removed and have it still look halfway decent? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. That's what I'm getting from the set, from the photos I took. Like, the target just looks like it's a piece there. It would be harder to remove, I think, the gun. But in the end, these are Legos. You can build what you want with them. You could remove that speeder bike right off of the big shooting device and still have a little speeder bike. And you could remove some of the stuff from the tree and just have Wicked in a tree. The thing that gets me is these are, like, $20 sets. And I would think that for this kind of thing, they'd be great in that $12 price point where they have basically the figure packs with just a a Lego to get around Hasbro's licensing. It's like, here's a six brick ship and here's eight characters. Yeah, I I think, I mean, you said that back in 99, the Lego sets looked expensive. It's Lego's kind of had the the Hasbro thing happen where there's been a, a, a price creep over the last 20 years. The days of $12 Lego sets are, are long gone, my friend. I still think every once in a while I get one of those, like, four-figure packs for 12 bucks. Yeah, but those are only... This one that you've got a picture of here with the, uh, the Endor set, right? You've got a ship and you've got a tree, and it's their pricing is all based on the number of pieces that you have. So looking at something like this, I can see how it would be about $20. If it was just the speeder bike, then yeah, I could see then it would be a lot cheaper. But as it is, this one, yeah, $20 feels about right. I do think that you you hit on something there where it's kind of like the battle packs that they have, where it is just like one ship or one little like turret or something, and then mm-hmm. four minifigures or five minifigures. Um, and it does feel like that, but this is more um, useful, I guess, because the ships that, that come with those battle packs are really kind of silly. They most of the time they don't exist in the movies. Uh, it, it, it's something. It's kind of like the mini rigs. Mini rigs. Yeah, it's kind of like the mini rigs. Um, but this seems to be much more geared towards kids, which they say those battle packs were also geared towards because of, you know, you get the, the troop building aspects and it's within a, a lower price range. So it's, you know, you're not going out and spending $120 on a, a sand crawler. Uh, you're going out and spending, yeah, 12 or 15 bucks. And you're getting a cool little ship, and it shoots, you know, little missiles, and you're getting some guys that you knock down with that missile. Uh, but I, this is taking that up notch, which, which I think is cool, right? I mean, Legos are supposed to be played with, and this gives them another way to to play with them. Well, let's look at the 20th anniversary line that they came out with, because that was kind of the big news. What you get with that is, you know, a Star Wars set, but they're also introducing a classic. Lego minifigure, and it's fun to look back and remember that when they started the Lego sets, the figures were yellow, like Lego people. Yeah, yeah, I think the the first Lego set that uh, had a minifigure that was not yellow was the original Cloud City, uh, and it had a Lando that was was not yellow, uh, and so that was what started the the changing of the color of the skin tone for the Legos. Uh, and after after that, they slowly started, um, you know, changing it so that they weren't all yellow. But yeah, this is kind of funny. It, it reminds me of what Hasbro's doing with uh, that vintage reproduction line that they're doing. It kind of harkens back to the the good old days of Lego collecting when sets were cheaper um, and weren't in so many numbers uh, <laughs> that. I've got I've got spreadsheets to track of the sets that I have, and each year that spreadsheet is is longer than the year before it because they just keep putting on more and more sets, and they've got more and more lines. And this 20th anniversary line is is uh, is another one of those lines that they're coming out with. That you know I I'm I'm born with these sets. I think that it's great that they're doing it. I wish they would have done more from. Like the original couple of years that uh, they had Lego sets, like the Anakin Pod Racer that they're coming out with, that one um, was one of the original sets that came out in '99. But then they've got that Imperial Troop Lander that I 
I don't know where they're coming up with that. It was a, originally a set that came out in 2008, and apparently they thought that they needed updating, so they're putting in the 20th anniversary line. My only guess is they needed something that was going to be cheaper. Yeah, I think they're trying to hit all the price points, and that's why... I don't know why they chose this set, but yeah, I mean, it is definitely one of the cheaper sets. Yeah, it, it's not It's not for any of the movies. I don't know. It just seems like they're... Uh, they missed the mark on, on this one. But you know, the other ones, they've got, you know, like I said, Anakin's Podracer. They've got uh, the Slave One that they're coming out with. And, and yeah, they all come with that, uh, that original... A, or a copy of the original figure, uh, which which is cool. You can you know click all the the bases together, you know, to have a nice display of your twentieth anniversary set. So that, that's neat. Um, I'm looking forward for the most part. And the minifigures have a logo on the back of them, right? So you'll always be able to tell the original minifigure apart from this re-release. Well, you'll be able to tell the difference between the body piece, right? I don't know how oh, they're yes. going to differentiate the legs and the head and the hair, but unless it's <laughs> all just one, right? If it's kind of like what they do with keychain, where it's just it comes already assembled the x-wing starfighter trench run was a set that kind of caught my eye it's now part of the 20th anniversary but it is a set aimed specifically at younger people it still has 132 pieces but this is one it has a giant logo on it saying it's ages four plus whereas most i looked at were seven plus ten plus yeah these these i'm excited about uh this is something that ever since i had kids this is something that I've wanted them to do. They've got a, a juniors line for all the other brands that they've got, uh, which is uh, for four and up. And basically what they are is, is they're similar sets to assemble. So they've got bigger pieces. It's not a bunch of bitty little studs that you got to put together. It's, it's easier to put together. Um, so it's you know um, good for kids with you know little fingers trying to snap those pieces in. So this is something I'm excited for as a parent um, because it's going to get Legos into my kids' hands all that much sooner. But seriously, why, speaking of that, where's where's our Star Wars Duplos? You know they've got Marvel Duplos. Where's my Star Wars Duplos? My my one year old needs to have Star Wars Duplos. I was wondering about that myself. Why they didn't have you know, fun Duplo sets. Yeah, I don't get it. I, I I don't get it. And then the set that caught my eye is from the new Galaxy... I'm blanking. I got Galaxies of Adventures and no, Rebels. This is, Resistance. This is Resistance. This from Resistance, yes. You just had to follow the thought process there, yeah. Andrew. But from Resistance... This red tie interceptor, which reminds me of the remember the Royal Guard interceptor they made and like the the titanium line and things. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I know that you've talked before about how you like the look of the Resistance Hasbro figures because of the bright, brilliant colors. I think that's what this set really has going for it. Is it's so unique because of that brilliant red color that they got. Yeah, I just really this one struck me you know i've been watching some of the cartoons there and i haven't gotten completely into it but i think it has a tremendous visual style and i think that it's a very toyetic style yeah the hasbro figures we still need to do a proper review but i like that line quite a bit and yeah this set it was like all right i think i'm gonna when there's one of those you know 25 percent off coupon sales i think i'm gonna get myself this set yeah my only uh problem with it is that it's yet another TIE Fighter, which I mean, you're never going to get away from that, but they've released so many variations on TIE Fighter over the years that I, I could fill up an entire bookcase of just Lego TIE Fighters. They've had so many come out. But, I mean, you're not going to get away from that because it's such an iconic ship that they're going to keep coming out with new versions of it. So Lego is going to keep you know, bringing those new versions over to their style. So let me ask you, since you do have every Lego set, are you buying the 20th anniversary re-releases with the new figures and things? Is that a, a must-do? Yeah, yeah, those will definitely be in the collection. Because even though they are re-releases, they aren't. Um, they're a different design than the ones that came out 20 years ago. Um, okay. Yeah, so it's it's not going to be like if you were to build Anakin's Pod Racer from '99. 
and then Anakin's Padres from 2019, they're going to look vastly different. Uh, this new one is a lot more detailed and looks a lot more screen accurate than the original one, which was really quite blocky. Uh, so there, there are differences in, in the set. So they'll definitely be in the collection for sure. All right. And before we move on to the next topic, we do have a question from a listener that I'll kind of throw out there from Night Goblin Shaman. Are we excited about the shop that's going to be opening at Galaxy's Edge? Galaxy's Edge, it was announced opening this fall. And yeah, there's going to be a shop there full of exclusive merchandise. And my guess is full of people, just tons and tons and tons of people. I have a feeling getting the stuff at that store is going to be an issue for I can't months. even imagine what the line's going to be like. Well, from what I understand, yeah, so these these shops are like in a bazaar setting where it's out in the open. So I think that'll make it a little bit more accessible. It might take you a little while to work your way to the front of the line. But uh, it's not like you're getting off a ride into a gift shop and that's where these are in some, you know, enclosed space. I feel like I think they're going to be more out in the open, which will help. Yeah, I, I know that like when... We have some friends pick us up stuff at Disney's. There's the downtown Disney stores that have the merchandise as well as the stores you know, at the Mission to Endor and things, the uh, Star Tours. But I'm not sure. What I'm excited for is some rumored information that is going around about s- some figures that will be at the set at, at the show I'm not racing to get to Galaxy's Edge, though. I want to go there, but I have a feeling the crowds are going to be so nuts. I mean, Disney... Impressive is what I think of, is just... I mean, the only thing I can compare it to is going to San Diego Comic-Con, and it's, like, the busiest day, which is Saturday, and you literally can't move. Like, you can't go anywhere because there's just so many people. You just kind of have to, like... Go where the crowd takes you. And it's like that outside of the convention center, too. And it's just, it's oppressive. I mean, even, like, the best people can, best mentally healthy people can have a panic attack with this many people around them. So, fortunately, we have some very good friends who live in both Orlando and the L.A. area who are really good about getting us collectibles from these types of places. And so I'm looking forward to the collectibles, but it might be 2020 before I make my way down to Orlando to Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. Maybe 21. Oh, it looks like we we have a viewer from London who's going in September of this year, so... You're a braver man than I, sir. A braver man than I. But, you know, it might not be that bad, but... I just remember when the new Star Tours opened, the line for that was so long, we were only able to, you know, even using the Fast Pass and things, ride it three times in a day. So it was kind of one of those frustrating experiences. Are you going, Andrew? Yeah, my wife and I are planning a a trip to Orlando in 2021. So we're hoping that by then... Uh, the crowds will die down enough that it won't be uh, the oppressive experience. Um, I know when it first starts up, it sounds like, at least for the Anaheim one, that it's like the limited amount of, of um, tickets that, you, that are given out for those first couple months, I think. So that'll hopefully help that initial mad rush anyway. Yeah, if we hear it's not so bad, I could see us making a trip down But I just don't want my first trip there to be a negative experience. It's not that I'm not excited for it, but that I want to really enjoy it. And there's that meme going around on YouTube that's like the official photo of, uh, or yeah, on Facebook, the official photo of Galaxy's Edge. And it's like got two people in front of an ad at. And then it's like opening day of Galaxy's Edge. And it is, yeah, San Diego Comic-Con crowds. And I just, I want to be able to enjoy my experience. And so it's not going anywhere. You know, I didn't see Captain EO until 1992. I can wait. I didn't see it until the 2000s. Ooh. All right. So to get back to collecting, Andrew, all of us actually on this call have gotten our barges from Hasbro, but Marjorie and I have yet to actually 
open R's. It is rather large. This is not a picture of Kilroy. This is a picture of Marjorie. <laughs> I'm not standing on my tippy toes. I'm not standing on phone books, as someone <laughs> joked with me on Instagram that uh, I was doing, but... It's, it's a big box. The FedEx guy was laughing hysterically. Yeah, you're flat-footed here. You're yes. not kneeling. No, no, no. I'm not ginormous, Arnie. I mean, come on. Here's our friend Chris, one of the guys I was talking about who does help us get some stuff at Disney World. And for you don't know Chris, you don't know how tall he is, but this looks like a detolf. So if you know what a detolf is, there's the sail barge. It's like seven-eighths of a detolf. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's massive. And this is Andrew. <laughs> Andrew's got the best photo. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, I was uh, cuddling with it by the fire, yeah. or at least the picture of the fire. Yeah, yeah. I don't have an actual working fireplace in the home, so I had to settle for you know the the YouTube twenty four hour fireplace video. And let's all take a moment to marvel at his quarter scale Hot Toys Boba Fett <laughs> and the. Sideshow Hot Toys, Bespin Luke over there. Yeah, and... which should be joined by the quarter-scale Darth Vader later this year. But one thing to notice about the photo, and this is pretty consistent, we ordered two barges, and Andrew, you got one. Yep. But a lot of the, almost all the boxes I've seen, the shipper boxes, have damage. How was yours when you opened it? Because that's where we're at, is we're... We've just cleared an entire, like, eight-foot table to use to open the boxes just at the first step to inspect for damage. Yeah, and that was, really, I wasn't planning on opening my box right away because, yeah, I wasn't exactly sure where I was going to put it yet. But when I saw there was that, um, those couple little scuffs and holes on the side, I was like, I probably better open it sooner rather than later just to make sure and there's no damage to the actual box inside because they double box this so you've got the actual box of the sail barge with the nice vintage artwork on it they put that inside a box and then they put that inside the shipper box so you do have a little bit of extra padding in there which was nice okay Okay, yeah, I've not seen the holes ever go through to something black, you know, like black cardboard that I would expect to see. But I, I didn't realize yet that they were double boxed. And, and how is your yak face? Because I am seeing a few rumblings of people who claim that they either didn't get the coin, they didn't get the cup, or that theirs was missing. Yeah, no, mine is exactly the way that it was advertised. Everything's there. It's not. I saw a picture of uh, one that got put on the card back upside down. Um, yeah, I saw that from Yak yeah, Face. Yeah. It was on, on a Facebook group. That's awesome. Yeah, but No, mine's, mine's pristine, and I really like the way that it came in the box. It's actually, like, slid into a part of the styrofoam, so there's really no easy way for that to get damaged in shipping, which was nice. I was a little worried about how that was going to get packed in there. But the way they designed the packing for the actual contents of the box is actually really, really good. So walk us through. I mean, this is the sail barge on top of two bookcases. <laughs> right, yeah. So that's where I uh, have it for the time being is on top of two four-foot tall uh bookcases which is good it's a nice viewing level and it gives my seven-year-old access to to play with it very very gently uh but yeah so it's really uh big uh i was not quite prepared for just how big it was going to look out of the box uh, now, see, we have seen this. Now, we saw it last year. We saw it this year at Toy Fair. So that's interesting that you said that because when people get it, like, it's big. I'm like, well, yeah, it's big. And then I remember, okay, unless you were at those events, you didn't see it. So it exceeded expectations for you, Andrew. Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, as far as the size goes, uh, yes, it technically exceeded expectations because it is bigger than what I it would you know how everything you see pictures of things and you think oh yeah that that that's a pretty good size and then when you actually try to put it in a space it's 
it looks different. It's either like if you get a TV, right? You're like, oh, this is a big TV. This is going to look great on this wall. And then you get it and it seems small. This is the opposite of that, where you get it and it seems really big. <laughs> uh, That's more my experience, is because when I'm in like Best Buy looking at a television, they have those giant ceilings and they have big open spaces. And when I'm in a arcade looking at a game, they have tall ceilings and big open spaces. All of a sudden, you bring that arcade game in your house, you're like dang that's bigger than it felt yeah that's that's really what this is uh so once i got over over the size of of that um now how did this come hmm. we've got some pictures here of pieces how much assembly was required for you uh there's a fair amount of assembly yeah the picture that you see there is just the side panels um that are actually when you take it out of the box, those panels are on the side of the sail barge. So the assembly that's required are a couple of little bits that are apparently engine detail that go underneath in the back. There's a couple of small um, antenna that go in. Uh, there's the the main deck gun, and then the two side the rail guns. Um, and then of course the, the, the sales themselves, uh, which were kind of, uh, kind of hard to put together. It's, it's, it's kind of like putting up a tent. Yeah. (laughs) You see, I was wondering about those because for people who, again, have only seen photos and didn't hear our interview with Mark Boudreau, those are cloth sails, right? And you have to actually stretch them taut over the mechanism yeah so it out of the box you'll see there's the uh, those small rods that go across the sail and there's several of those that go um, across the width of it those are already attached to the sail thankfully um however the big arm the big cross arm that goes across the center and then um, there's a couple of um, bars that go across that. Uh, those have to be first assembled. And then, yeah, you're, you're putting one tip of the sail in one end of that crossbar. And then you're having to like do some very careful, slight bending of plastic in order Ooh. to get it to fit into the cup on the other end. And then you have to do that um, on two points on each side of the sail as well. That was a little nerve wracking uh, because I was, uh, you, know, you just don't want to snap that plastic because the, the crossbar plastic is really rigid, but the, the cup that it goes into is like a soft rubber. And so that helped because it was flexible uh, but yeah, I was a little nervous, putting, especially the first one. Once I got got through the first sale and started on the second, one, I felt pretty pretty confident that I wasn't going to break anything. But that first time was a little scary. Now, what is your feeling about putting it back in the box disassembly? Once you've put this together, can you put it back in storage? So here's th- th- this is one of the- <laughs> One of my gripes, right? So I was talking about the packaging and how great it is. One of the great things about it is it's non-destructive, right? You, in order to open it, there's some um, flaps that you unhook, right? It's like the, the top of uh, a box packaging that you would get. There's a little tab that goes down and it pops several of those off. And then the whole thing opens up like a clamshell um, and unfolds. So you have total access to everything inside the box. So the box isn't ruined or, or anything, um, which is great. And there's a, a box inside of that that has all the pieces and the accessories that you need to put together. Uh, but I don't quite understand the purpose of that if you're never going to be able to fit the thing back in the box. There are some pieces that can be removed 
Um, the, there's like what I mentioned with that, the engine detail and the little antennas, those are made out of a soft rubber. And so those can easily be, be popped back out. The sails on the other hand, when you assemble the crossbars, those definitely snap into place. And I don't think I didn't want to exert pressure but I don't think that once those snap in, you can take them apart. Um, I did not push mine all the way in the second time just so that I would have that option. It seemed like it would be able to, to easily um, come apart then. Um, and also the, the, uh, the main deck gun, um, the direction say that it snaps in. I didn't push it all the way in either just so that I would again, have that option to take it off. All the other things seem to be able to come out fairly easily, but that, that sale, I don't think that, I don't think it's ever coming apart. That was my feeling about the sale too. I didn't even think about the deck gun. I do know Hasbro has many times sent ships the one that comes to mind is the Naboo Starfighter. It, the, in order to fit in the small box, that long tail on the back of the Starfighter was a separate piece. Mm-hmm. And once you snapped it in, there was no getting that back out. Yeah, the one that comes to mind for me is the uh, Black Series I Fighter that they came out with. You, you know, It comes in three parts. You've got the main cockpit, and then you've got the two giant wings. Mm-hmm. Once you snap those wings in... You're stuck with a really big TIE fighter that you can never take apart and store again. <laughs> I know because I wanted to store it <laughs> and could not get them to come off. Huh. That explains why we've seen it used as a coffee table at your house. I, I joke, you but go. it is coffee table size. <laughs> yes, that's actually a pretty decent idea. <laughs> I don't think it's quite sturdy enough. I don't think the plastic's rigid enough for that. You could, you know, put like an acrylic case over it and use the case as the table. True, true, true. All right. So you took some detail shots for us here. Now, all of these little like window ports on it open and close? Not all of them. Um, some of them do and some of them don't. I'm not really sure the rhyme or reason as to which ones open. I'm assuming the reason they all open is just to make sure that those panels, especially the ones that do come off on the one side, um, are sturdy and have, um, don't have spots to snap. Um, because if all of those windows were open, you'd have a bunch of, uh, little panes in between that I could see easily snapping as you're taking that panel off the side of the, of the sail barge. So um, on each side, I would, I would guess there's maybe about half a dozen um, windows that, that open up and they don't open up very much, which is uh, another very small nitpick that I have. You can open them just enough. You could kind of see inside and you could maybe see somebody looking out of the window. If you had somebody, set up inside um but you know i'm thinking of that scene where luke pulls that guy Mm -hmm. out of the window you're not going to be able to reenact that with these because they only open up well i don't know eighth of an inch (laughs) maybe a quarter of an inch so they don't open up very far and you brought up something really interesting because i mean this is a ship but it's really a play set right and what you've got here is You've, you with the pictures we're looking at, you have it in ship mode, but for the playset features we're going to be looking at later, all the panels on the side you have facing, you know, towards your room are removable. Right. Yeah. And what what shocked me with with those is the amount of detail that's even on the inside of those panels, uh, which I, I mean, that's something I was not expecting like the, on one of them there's you can see there's a uh like a almost like a statue or a bust of an ishi tib head attached to the inside of this which you would never see when it that panel is on the side of the barge you're only going to see that when you pop that panel off so the attention to detail that they put into the interior of panels that just pop off is astounding to me yeah just 
we were talking to the people at Hasbro over at Toy Fair, and just for people who really know about toy manufacturing, there are over 1,000 paint applications on the barge. And each paint application, you know, costs them money. That's why you don't see a lot of weathering and things on the cheaper toys. And here, they did so much paint on these things, a thousand, over a thousand applications. And it shows. It really does. The attention to detail in the the paint job that is on this barge is incredible. I, I, I can't even... I can't even put into words how happy I am with how it just looks as a display piece because it does look so screen accurate. The paint is beyond anything that I've seen on a ship that they've put out to date. And you gave us this picture of the cockpit. Did you use a fisheye lens on that? I did. Yes, I did. (laughs) Yeah. So... Uh, but that is big enough to hold two figures in those chairs and yeah, it connects to the main bridge there and has just so much detail. All right. The biggest question, the reason I'm actually afraid to open the box, I look at those boxes and I feel like Frank and Hellraiser. Like I'm scared that, you know how he gets chains that come out and hook his flesh. I think I'm I'll... scared of decals. There, there are ah, no decals. Yay! You say yay, and I was a little disappointed. <laughs> Did you have your honest. tweezers I, and your exacto knife and everything ready to go? <laughs> uh, no, uh, but I would have happily put on some stickers. Uh, one of my uh, fondest memories as a kid uh, is uh, when your for Christmas I got the uh, Imperial Hoth base. It, I One of my memories, I don't remember opening it. I don't remember... Uh, taking out of the box, but I do remember sitting on the floor with my dad putting stickers on all little pieces. And stickers, are, I mean, stickers are cool. They're <laughs> fun. See? They're they're uh, a, a little. If if you're if you're like me, it can be very painstaking because you want them to be perfectly centered in the little mm-hmm. cutout shape that is the same shape as that sticker. Um, I'm glad they didn't do it in the cockpit because that would have been really hard because they got all these little pieces that kind of stick up and they'd be in the way. You would probably need uh, a couple pairs of of tweezers to get those in there. Uh, But I don't have any problem with putting stickers on and I I would mind it a couple. Let me just share with you my childhood memory of having the Empire Strikes Back X-Wing with the battle damage and opening up the cockpit and putting Luke in. And seeing that decal that I got off center and outside the ridge and how I always wanted it back (laughs) in its place. And I tried to do it and then I tore the decal trying to move it. And you have nightmares of that to this Uh, day. It's almost like surgery when I apply decals. I clear a table. Marjorie has to stay near me with like a sponge because I start beating (laughs) sweat. It's like he's doing brain surgery. (laughs) (laughs) And then... We're looking at the top here where, yeah, they have the panels that open up so people can come onto the top like they so we saw in the movie to have the fight up there. Yeah, that was a nice surprise for me. I was not uh, I was not really thinking that that would be the case. I was like, oh, look at the inside. They got these cool ladders. I wasn't thinking, oh, yeah, they need to have a place to go. They just kind of go into the ceiling. I don't know what I'm thinking, but then... Uh, my daughter was looking at it and she's like, Oh look, there's a door. And so she opened the door and I was like, that's amazing. <laughs> How did I miss that? But yeah, like, uh, yeah, the, the, you said that this is a play set and there are a lot of really cool play features. These doors opening is one, you know, you got the, the deck gun, all that, but you know, there's a, I don't think I took a picture of it, but there's a part of the rail that you can see it in, in that picture with the two open hatches. Uh, next to the the rail gun, there's a part of the rail that actually can come off, so you can have that scene where R two D two pushes C three PO over the edge, and it's stuff like that that uh, it's just it's just really cool when you see that kind of detail and um, extra things that they didn't they didn't need to put that in there. But the fact that they did makes it even cooler. So you took shots of the under. This was had you assembled it at this point, or were these mid assembly shots? These are post-assembly shots. So you've shots. got the 
uh, sails I, on it and you turned it sideways. Yes. Yeah. Very, very carefully. Um, so that the, um, I put it on a couple of chairs so that the sails would, would hang over the side and not have any pressure on them. And I was holding it with one hand and holding my phone with the other, to take the, take the picture. But yeah, they even put a wash underneath here. And then as you see, it's got the clear legs that it can stand on to simulate hovering. Yeah. And those, the, those legs have a, a nice rubber foot on the bottom. So it, it's not going to skid on the surfaces that you put it on. And then you just took some detail shots here, but yeah, looking at this showing just like the wear of some of the wiring on it, the deck gun where obviously you need to have a, a Leia figure there and Luke can swing on to it. Yeah. The only thing that I wish that this sail barge has, I know why it doesn't. And, and I'm only half serious when I say this, but I really kind of wish there was a button on that, that gun that had like an explosion feature, <laughs> you know, kind of like, like a speeder mm-hmm. bike, right? The vintage speeder bike, you push the button and it kind of pops apart. Cause that's like the, that's the thing with the speeder bikes is they explode. They hit things and blow up. Well, the sand barge, it blows up spectacularly. I wanted, you know, it'd be nice if you had something where it kind of broke apart, but something this big breaking apart. Well, this is where you buy a second uh, one yeah, I know and I some M eighties. No, <laughs> no, yeah, that, no, no, thanks, no, thanks. I'm just kind of showing people all the detail on the katana for those who either don't have it yet or haven't opened it yet. I love the kitchen area. I just absolutely that was something that astonished me when I first saw that <laughs> last year with the way they have like the fish creatures hanging down, and it even looks like a metallic faucet. Yeah, I really am uh, looking forward to filling up the, the barge with, with figures and having them at the sink there washing <laughs> dishes. I'm really looking forward to so having that. So have you already started buying three-quarter inch figures to populate your barge? Uh, well, I've got the figures to populate the barge. Uh, they're still in the packaging, though. And I'm not sure if I want to tear those things off the card to put on here. My goal is to scour the floor of celebration next month and just look for some some open figures that are at decent prices and use those yeah i i as soon as the barge was announced i hit ebay and i bought like seven of those power of the force two skiff guard packs and i got them for yeah, like seven right. bucks a pack yeah see that's the thing is the stuff you want to open Andrew, so that's why i thought that you were gonna definitely buy some to populate it now, in addition to Yak Face, this came with Jabba, too. And this is a highly detailed repaint of the Jabba they've released before. And I've seen some comparison photos. This thing is incredible on it. Yeah. It, again, the, the paint detail that they've got on him is miraculous how impressive that, that paint is. The, the downside to him is um, his, his hands are quite open far enough for him to really hold on to the microphone that he's got so you kind of have to pry those open in order to get him to hold on to that uh other than that yeah he he looks incredible you do have a photo of him holding it here and it looks great you know just just so scene accurate and i love the detail they put and you took a photo there's like a hot family mural or something on the wall Yeah, yeah, nice mosaic there, you know. And yeah, Jabba likes to remember and his mama. The Gamorrean head right above it, just you know, so the Gamorreans remember who they work for. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's one of the things with this barge is all the stuff that's like on the walls. You know, you've got the there's the Rancor uh, sculpture on the one side, and you have the the like, portrait, and the, like you said, the the animals that are hanging on the wall in the kitchen in one of the in the cell there's some alien yeah, there it's, it's on the like a dead authority the wall yeah just, stuff like that that's awesome is the only word that i can come up with yeah i'm scrolling through the photos because you took a ton there's the dead authorian with like some bones next to him i don't know if he's actually dead or just near death but he looks kind of desiccated 
Yeah, he hasn't been <laughs> fed in a while. But yeah, all the stairs and everything. So I guess you being a Hot Toys and Sideshow collector like me, you know high-end collectibles. And at $500, this barge certainly fits that bill. Does this feel like a high-end collectible to you, or does this feel like a toy? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I would say the attention to detail definitely feels like a high-end collectible. But at the same time, all the play features makes it like a toy. You know, they, there's a, a trap door there where you push a button and you can have a figure fall through a trap door. You know, it, it, uh, it's a, the perfect melding of the two categories which I think is why I like it so much because yeah, I was announced it and said it was going to be $500. I was oh, $500. That's, that's a lot of, a lot of money for a play that, but having it in front of me, I understand why it's $500. And I think it's definitely worth that amount of money because it's, it's a piece of art. It really is. I mean, it's, I consider it like hot boys quality as far as the detail goes. So we're done backing the barge? Absolutely not. None whatsoever. I think the thing is so impressive. Uh, my only fear is uh, what are they going to do next? Because this has set the bar pretty high. And it, also, I hope what they do next isn't quite as large. <laughs> well, I think that they've heard that. There was no announcement of any new HasLab. Not even a hint. But... Maybe celebration. I mean, I'm guessing, but I think that this was hugely successful and that there will be another HasLab, at least for Star Wars. They haven't done it for any other license. We did ask the Marvel team about it, and they're they're looking at it. Um, and I'd love to see them do something like an actual legend scale Sentinel or something huge. But yeah, they know from things like you mentioned with the black series tie fighter and this space is an issue. So I don't know if every has lab item needs to break the bank the way this one did, but we'll see. And I got to say, you've made me really, really excited to open mine. You know, there was a little bit of controversy coming out of toy fair when it was announced, you know, they sold how many? I think it was around 8,800 barges through the HasLab. I think so. Something like that. A lot came in the last few days. Yeah, it was like people were wanting it to fail <laughs> because they didn't want to spend $500. <laughs> and then once it hit the 5,000 uh -huh. people, everybody's like, well, I have to have it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, and there was, there was part of that with me where it's like, this is the first time that the has lab thing has happened. I kind of want to, I want to support that. I want to support the idea of giving the fans something that they wouldn't be able to have any other way. So that's why I, I think day one went ahead and back the barge because you know, it's the only way we're going to get this kind of stuff. So they, I just called it up. There are 8,810 of them that were backed. Now, assuming let's say they made, I don't know, 9,000 because of damage, things that break, replacements, whatever. And then they said that only about 1,000 units are going to be available across the globe to other areas. And they'll be just like this, but not come with the book that we got, you know, midway through that was a backer exclusive. I saw a few people on our Facebook page kind of grumbling, like it's not as exclusive as they said it was going to be. But I'm like, you know, they only made a thousand more. That still makes this an exceptionally limited item. If, say, they made 10,000 of them, that is so much less than most of the items that they build. And yeah, with the artisanship that they've put into it that you're describing, I'm more than happy. And, you know, the fact that the yak face, you didn't take any pictures, but you got the cup and the coin and everything. Yep. Yeah, everything's there. Did you open it, or are you going to keep that one carded? I'm going to keep that one what carded. What about the cup? <laughs> well, but it's the same same cup that came with the, the R2-D2, so uh, you can always get extra <laughs> from buying another extra r The reason I bought two was so I could keep one of those yak faces carded and still be able to open the coin. 
Oh, right, yeah. But now I'm kind of glad I did, yeah. so I can build right. one now, but also keep one boxed, because I'll never be able to put it back in the box. That's true. That is true. Why are you looking at me like that? I'm not looking at you anyway. I'm just smiling. Oh. All right, well, Andrew, thank you. Any final thoughts you want to share with all the listeners about your barge? Uh, it's amazing. It is a thing to behold. Uh, if you got one, you should be uh, happy with what you what you get. I think it's a phenomenal uh, piece of plastic. I think it looks great. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Thank you to all the listeners who've joined us this week. A reminder, celebrations coming up very, very fast. And on Sunday, April 14th, 11 a.m., you'll be able to catch us on the podcast stage. And hopefully we will see so many of you at McCormick Place. I can't believe how close Celebration is. Are you panicking yet, Andrew? Uh, I'm, I'm panicking, but for different reasons. It's the whole logistics of you know where the kids going to go because they're not going with us this time. Uh, so that's why I'm panicking. Uh, the rest of it, I you know, I, seeing the coverage that you guys had at Toy Fair really got me excited for Celebration. Uh, it's because up until that point, I was like, oh, it's another celebration. You know, it's going to be crowded. There's going to be lots of people. It's going to be a logistical nightmare trying to get into these panels. But then I don't know what it was, but Toy Fair, it really kind of got my blood flowing again. It was, yeah, I'm, I can't wait. I'm super pumped for this one. So am I, but it's starting to set in how real it is that it's just a month away. I'm just so happy we don't have to drive or fly to it. That is true. Well, Andrew, thanks again for joining us. Can't wait to hang out with you at Celebration. Listeners, thank you for joining us. We will have another show next week. We aren't quite sure what it will be, but it uh, may be Andrew talking more Legos with a hypercast. Yeah, yeah, that should be good. I've got a, I got a couple ideas uh, in the back of my mind, so we'll uh, try to get those put together. All right, and... Again, if you there's anything you want discussed on the show, email us at show at swactionnews.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and we've really been posting to the website a lot more as news comes in. We've got a brand new website. It's not finished yet. We're still putting up photo galleries and things, but we're posting articles of things as new celebration news comes out. And then we'll always, of course, round it up in our live shows and then out on the podcast feed as well. And we're on Instagram, too, so, you know, follow us over there. Yeah. Although the, uh, they don't let you post links on Instagram. That's the only frustrating point. That's not what it's for. No. it's, But it's not good for saying, hey, there's an in-depth article. No. So thank you for listening. We'll be back next week. May the pegs be stocked and the force be with you. Thank you for listening to Star Wars Action News. We hope you've enjoyed the show. You can find pictures of the toys reviewed, chat with other Star Wars collectors, and find hundreds of Star Wars Action News episodes at our website, SWActionNews.com. This podcast is created by Star Wars fans showing their love of Star Wars. We want your feedback on Star Wars Action News. You can email us at show at SWActionNews.com or post your thoughts in the Star Wars Action News forums at SWActionNews.com, the most friendly forums on the web. You can also find Star Wars Action News on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. The links to our social media sites are at SWActionNews.com. You can also help out our show by telling your friends to listen by posting on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or in person. We would also greatly appreciate a five-star review written on iTunes. A link to our iTunes feed is at SWActionNews.com. You can also send us your latest store reports, figure reviews, and more. Email us an MP3 or iPhone voice memo at show at SWActionNews.com. All content received is subject for use on the show. Star Wars Action News is not affiliated with Lucasfilm Limited. 
Star Wars, and all that the Star Wars universe contains is trademark and copyright Lucasfilm Limited, a subsidiary of the Walt Disney Company. All rights reserved. Star Wars Action News. Now this is podcasting.